Okay, so this is just a quick shoot on how CatRig does its naming or its automated uh, naming uh, system. Uh, so this is just, I'll just quickly step through this. Uh, this is the this is the base of the rig. Obviously, this is where um, the if you look in the CatRig parameters over here. This is like the prefix name that's going to be applied to all of your rig. So anything within the rig, anything from the, either the thigh or hand, so forth, um, right the way down to fingers or the digits, will all have a prefix up here of VIP01 or whatever you want to name it to. So if you want to change the name, you can just change it to, say, human. I always put space after it just for the naming. And you'll notice now that all of these bones have been updated to prefix up here in your modify panel called human so you name it whatever you want um, so what you'll notice as well is cat has a automated script somewhere somehow that just actually does all the renaming for your bones or your limbs so if you select uh, say the thigh bone um, what most people are actually doing, and the problems that I'm actually finding, is that they'll start naming up here, and they'll start calling, you know, something like leg up here. But what actually Cat does is, say, if you select the actual thigh itself, this this is where you actually do all your naming. So um, you'll notice by changing these um, <coughs> names down here is what actually changes the name. But what you have to do is actually click off the actual object and reselect the object and you'll notice uh, that will now update the name. Uh, that's the trick. Um, so you'll see that um, any suffix that comes in up here is directly related to whatever you have in your bone setup down here. Now, good practice is if you select, say, the left thigh here um, and uh, just putting L for say left side. Now what this is going to do is reflect all down the children. So see how now, uh, let's clear that one out. So let's just get rid of the segment name. Um, <coughs> actually it automatically comes back, look at that. Um, okay, so um, what that does now is all the prefixes down the leg are now named to L, you'll notice here. So you can probably put a space in there too if you want. Um, I do not press the space over, but yep, okay. So you can put a space in there, click off it, and click back on it, and you'll notice that that's been updated as well with the space. So all of these uh, children bones now <coughs> are all named L and or L space, so all the way down the chain. Now, um, to do this one properly, you probably want to call, say, the bone name uh, thigh, and click off it click back on it to <laughs> regenerate it. So now you've got L thigh one, and this one will um, automatically rename itself to L thigh two. You'll notice that uh, it does that. Uh, same, with the, same with this leg part here too, calf. Um, it'll do the same thing, it'll automatically rename it from calf one to calf two. So your naming is automatically done for you. This also works up here for the arms. This is another limb, so you have to count everything as an actual limb. So um, this will be the, exactly the same. L will be, and just remember, never start naming stuff up here in the top of the actual modifier panel. That's where you're gonna, everything's gonna start going wrong. Um, so this will be the L clavicle. Make sure you name it exactly like that. And that's how it's going to appear up here. Um, same with the arms, <coughs> same thing again, but make sure you do the bone name as arm, segment name is just going to be, I just preferably just put it as a number. You could actually just do this one as, say, shoulder, and this one as bicep, this one as forearm, and this one as, say, um, wrist or something like that. But just make sure you name it in here. So, say, wrist, and if you come back to it, it'll be called L wrist wrist one something like that but that probably renames it as well no that doesn't that's good but yeah um, actually it does yeah renames the actual forearm so renames 
both bones in the same forearm uh, to whatever you put it in here. So, um, <coughs> so if you call that one forearm, both of these will actually get renamed to forearm up here. So regardless of what you do, ignore what I just said, you cannot actually rename these to two different things. So if you call this one, um, let's say call, call it bicep, um, if you click off it and click back on it again, it will be called the old bicep one and that will automatically get renamed as well to bicep as well. So this gets counted as one part of the limb. Uh, there was also another one. Um, now, bone setup for the spine is, I, I think it's actually backwards, so the spine name has to be called spine, and then one gets put at the top here. So it's actually slightly backwards, I think, from um, testing. Now, uh, similar thing to the facial bones or any um, additional bones that you actually add, this is another thing. Um, say if you have the jaw, um, if you have the jaw bone, uh, let's say on the head, um, same thing again, do not name what you actually have up here. Uh, do not put, say, jaw up the top here. What will happen is when you click off it and you click back onto it, it now uh, it does actually name it for this one, which is kind of weird, which you don't really want to do. Um, you really want to just have this one named as, say, M, jaw, or whatever. Um, select it again, and the script automatically renames it all for you as soon as you click off it and click back onto it. So now it will be magically renamed to human, um, which we named the main face uh, cat bone, and to M jaw. So that applies to all of the other ones. If you don't uh, put the name into here, uh, what happens is it just starts getting wiped from up here um, each time you actually either restart or click off it. Um, same with here, make sure you name your neck and things like that. So make sure you put your neck name in here and not at the top. Okay, um, and that should cover the base of the naming. Cheers.